Drop kegs have been widely used for more than 2000 years. Even now, it remains as favorite choice of book designers. Drop caps bring a professional look to any page layout such as magazines, posters, and books. Once you master the basics, you can create your own drop cap designs for stunning results. Although they are used as decorative elements, but should we really use them? Keep watching to learn why and how to create stunning drop caps in Adobe InDesign. What is drop cap? Drop cap, also known as initial cap, is the first character of the paragraph that is actually larger than the rest of the text in the paragraph. Sometimes it has different colors from the black of the text. Sometimes it is embellished. This first letter extends up to several lines of the paragraph. Now, obviously, most of you have seen this kind of style used in magazines and newspapers. The way this first letter is designed is actually a drop cap. But why do we use it? Well, there are two main reasons. One, to add the meaning to the message by decorating the layout with fonts, colors, and even illustrations. Two, to assist the readers, divide the material down into chunks and recall where they left off the reading. In simple words, to add an appeal that could draw readers' attention to the start of a story. This can be applied to the beginning of the article, chapters, and other design scenarios. Now, let's talk about the brief history of the drop caps. The use of the drop caps dates back to early days of the book design. Although they are old fashioned, but they are still used till this date. They may be seen in illuminated monastic manuscripts from the 1400s, Renaissance cookery, and even more recent publications. Back into the old era, where printers weren't a mainstream, some space of the paragraph was left empty. Then they painted the first letter over the empty space. Nowadays, initial letters are not as fancy as they used to be. Fortunately, it is actually easy to create drop caps in Adobe InDesign. So, let's start creating drop caps. How to set up drop cap? There are actually many methods to create drop caps. For example, inserting a letter before the paragraph or inserting a letter image before the paragraph and then wrapping all the text. But which method should you choose? I would prefer enlarging a letter inside Adobe InDesign rather than using a vector letter from Adobe Illustrator. Launch Adobe InDesign and open the exercise file. The first method is to do this directly from the paragraph panel. Note what I just said. Paragraph panel. There is a paragraph panel and there is a paragraph style panel. Both of them are correlated, but they work differently in terms of level. You can locally change the styles from this paragraph panel. Whereas, you can change the styles of the entire document from paragraph styles panel. Let's open paragraph panel, which is easily found in the control toolbar. Else, go to window, type in tables, and choose paragraph. Shortcut key is Ctrl Alt T. In this panel, look at the bottom inputs. Left input decides how far your cap will drop. Right input decides the number of characters to be treated as drop cap. Another method of creating drop caps is through these bars at the corner of the control panel. Now, there is no need to highlight any text. Just place your cursor on the first text of the paragraph. 
by double clicking on the text frame or else you can press the shortcut key T. After you had clicked on it, look at the control bar at the top of this interface. Those three bars at the right corner. Yes, that one. Click on it. You will get this list of options from which you can select. Let's choose Apply Drop Cap and Nested Styles. Shortcut key is Ctrl Alt R. This has more advantage as compared to the last method. It has left aligned edge and scale for descender options, which I will explain in a moment. Now, in this tutorial, I am going to focus solely on drop caps. I will explain nested styles in some other tutorial. In the drop caps window, you would be able to see these input options. Lines field is responsible for creating the vertical spacing of the first text. In other words, if I change this value, this will happen. To view the changes as they are made, make sure your preview is checked. As I write 2 over here, the I letter consumes the two lines of the paragraph. Now, if I write 3 over here, the I letter consumes 3 lines of the paragraph. So, as I keep increasing and decreasing these values, the first letter will act accordingly, as per your instructions. Now, look at the character. Right now, it is set to 1, which means only first letter will act as a drop cap. Now, as I set it to 2, first two letters are acting as a drop cap. Now, as I set it to 8, the first 8 letters are acting as a drop cap. Pretty nice, huh? Right? Now, let's just keep the character to 1. Because I am only concerned with the first character. And set the lines to 4. Now, you can give it any character style you want. I had already designed bold and italic character styles for you. How to create these character styles? I will make a new tutorial for that. I will publish it very soon. So keep checking my Facebook page timeline. Select the bold style from this character style panel. Click OK. Focus on this, align with H. When you check this, the initial letter will shift towards the edge of the margins. If I turn off, it comes back to its original position. If you don't know the purpose of using these margins and how to set them, I have pasted the tutorial link in the description. Next thing you see is scale for descenders. When you check this, the initial letter reduces itself to fit itself into the indent created. For example, when your drop cap overlaps with the text below it, then you must definitely check this option. Then. See how the text scale itself to fit well. The last method is through the paragraph styles panel. Yes, that's true. I used paragraph panel for the first method. Control toolbar for the second method. Now I am going to use paragraph styles panel for the third method. You should only use first two methods if you are creating a small document. However, if you are creating multiple page long document, then go for this third method. First, we need to create a paragraph style. By the way, if you don't know how to create paragraph styles, click on the paragraph styles playlist down in the description. Open the paragraph styles panel. Shortcut key is F11. Locate the drop cap style present on this panel. Right click on it and choose edit. In this window, go to drop caps and nested styles. You can see same input options that we saw before in method 2. Make sure your preview is turned on. Let's write two lines and one character. Let's give it a bold character style. You see, 
entire document was affected rather than the single paragraph. Each initial letter is bolded and enlarged to two lines. But notice that some of them are fixed at the margins and others are not. Simple trick is check this aligned left edge. Your initials will be glued to the margins. Now, when I check on this descender, nothing happens. It's because none of them are overlapping with the text below it. So, it's a green signal to not to worry about this input option. Before I end this tutorial, let me show you one more important feature. Let's go to basic character formats. As I increase and decrease the font size, the size of the initial letter will change accordingly. However, they will maintain the two lines proportion. When you only change the leading size, drop capital resize accordingly. Pros and cons of the drop caps. Advantages. Drop caps can be formatted easily while sticking to the baseline grids. The initial letter can be mathematically scaled to the appropriate height. It's InDesign user-friendly. Even if the fonts go missing from the InDesign document, drop cap will stay intact to the baseline grids. If you delete the first letter of the paragraph, it will remain unchanged. Disadvantages Typographical problem, especially for web use. When highlighting the text on the web, the I letter of the InDesign is omitted out from the copy-paste technique. Even if you paste the text over here, you will see that I letter was not counted in the selection. If images are used as drop caps, and when you zoom in, the drop caps will be pixelated. So, try to use the vector drop caps in your document. Tip of the day. Initial letters sit on the same baseline grids as the body text. However, there is one common mistake that designers make in their projects. They put initial letters on the baseline grid. The thing is, letters with flat bottoms sits on the baseline grids, while the letters with the curved bottoms sit slightly below the baseline grids. In this situation, use a scale for descenders. Bonus tip of the day. You should only use drop caps at the start of the lengthy paragraphs like chapters. Never ever repeat the drop caps on every paragraph. When we press enter or put a line break or even put indents, it's already understood that it's a new paragraph. So, don't repeat the drop caps every time. Nevertheless, if the topic changes completely, then you should consider using drop caps. Exercise time. Now, since you had learned how to make drop caps, I want you guys to open this file that can be downloaded from the description and then apply the drop caps on every single paragraph. You should use Gallimard font. If you don't have that font, you can also use Times New Roman font. Then, go to drop caps, keep the lines 3 or 4 and keep the character to 1. I would love to see your work. So, share with me. If you have any questions, you can contact me at javadsumro1988 at gmail.com. You can also message me on my Instagram page, Javadsumro Studios. I hope this tutorial helped you learn Adobe InDesign drop caps. If you learned something amazingly new today, please subscribe my channel right now. My next tutorial will be about how to use images as drop caps in Adobe InDesign. So stay tuned. Smash that like button and share it with your friends. If you don't want to miss any of my future tutorials, hit that notification bell icon. I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye and take care.